What's up guys, it's your boy Pete and welcome back to Planting with Pete. Now, if you're new here, this channel consists of almost everything house plant related that tickles your fancy. Hit that subscribe button, sit back, and enjoy the video. Alright guys, on today's video, we are going through my Calathea collection. Now, I don't, okay, I don't know how I forgot about these two in the corner. I really don't know. Probably because they don't give me issues. But anyway, um, we're going over our Calathea collection now. Some of these are in okay can a lot of these are perfectly fine you know there are some blemishes um some of these still do carry old we're talking old foliage so you may see some blemishes on some of these and then um the, the two that the you notice i said two the two that look bad um <clears throat> we did a lot of the uh what you call it the, the cutting of the removing of the damaged foliage and then also you know with Calatheas you guys you really don't have to I know you're buying the plant um, or acquiring the plant for you know its foliage and things that such but if you know Calatheas Calatheas are known for spider mites I've never heard anyone say my Calathea has I had to throw away my Calathea because of the rips I don't know let me know down in the comment section below I have no clue I always hear spider mites but um, yes these plants do I don't know. They have some type of symbiotic relationship with the spotamite. I don't know. I don't see any benefit from it, but whatever. But yeah, they do get or attract spotamites. Some people are lucky not to even have a spot. Have never seen a spotamite, you guys. I'm hoping that door doesn't slang open and knock my stand down. But some people have never heard of a spotamite. I don't get it. I don't get it. And I'm pretty, it's always due to climate, okay? It's always due to climate. Like, I do get spider mites and things um, throughout the year, but the worst year is fall. It is horrible, horrible, horrible. Of course, um, summer is deadly hot, but they still find their way, you know, onto plants. I mean, I, I would think summertime would be a hibernation time for something that can't stand the heat, whatever. But anyway, um, we're just going to go through these. I was going to pick the camera up, you guys, and bring it along, but some of these have not moved out of their spot since we redid the inside of here, and I just would like to pick them up. And, yeah, and then I, I, and I had to stand up already, and then I feel like moving stuff and stuff, and it's fairly clean. I, I did vacuum, you guys, after the last video you guys seen with me and, well, you can't see it, the, um... What is that thing called? The Ethereum? Oh, it wasn't the Ethereum. It's down there. It was that um, semi hydro situation. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Um, well, and then some of these, um, like those that are hanging, I'm not going to bother. We just pick up the camera and move those around. Um, I'm still thinking about moving that one because it blocks like the view. Like you can't see my elbow. What's beside the elbow? I don't know, but you can't see a lot of those. <laughs> I'm trying to move my camera with my arm. You see what I'm saying, you guys? But we'll, we'll figure it out. But um, and I think that is it. Yeah, the big things and things and things and things. We'll start with the the actual cave. I would say the spot that has the most of the Calatheas, and go from there. All right. So the first Calathea we have, you guys, is the Calathea medallion. Now I've had this girl for some time. You do remember um, the leaves were just spectacular me just wonderfully tastefully big i would say but um you notice she's in a nice size pot with not much uh, foliage on her but i can guarantee you i can guarantee oh i'm just making a mess let's not do that um if you hear something slam you guys the door is open and the wind is blowing very nice day today and then also my stand is shaking let's hope that doesn't move but Calathea Medallion, you guys, um, again, don't worry about the foliage. I wish you guys, let's see, can I get you in there while we, um, see this? Yeah, she was much bigger than that, but I need to get this leaf off. Much bigger than what she is now, but like I said before, I don't worry about the foliage. As long as I have a healthy root system, the plant is definitely going to be okay. But um, she had a lot of the older damage to her. And what I ended up doing, you guys, let's move this back. What I ended up doing was just um, topping her off against it. I knew that I checked on the root system first. And I just topped her and I let her grow back. Um, you see any? Oh, I'm just making a mess. I can't do that. I just vacuumed literally for yesterday, but still. 
um, Calathea medallion. Alright guys, next plant, same situation, um, Philodendron macchiana. Um, she has none of the older leaves. I, I, topped, I took all of them off. I just got tired of looking at them. Um, and then it was also blocking all of the new growth from coming in um, from the inside here. The sheets on these things are just so ribly striped. It looked like a whole bunch of snails in here, but it's just a, like that. But anywho, again, nice size pot here. Awesome size root system. I doubt I will ever see any roots come out of the bottom of these just because they're not. I mean, it is possible. Not with these. I don't know, but again, I doubt it. Um, looking at these, I, again, um, these plants sit down in the, the cave situation, so I don't necessarily do this. It's pointless. <laughs> All of my calatheas, every last one of them, every single last one of them are in soil. You can't, you, you just can't. You, uh, we'll get into it. We'll get into it on, on the silver band. But um, yeah, Calathea macchiana, you guys, fairly, when I say an easy plant, aside from the spider mites, easy, not easy plant. I'm trying to move some of these foliage out of the way. There's a nice size leaf that's trying to push through. Um, but easy plant to care for. This is one of my Calatheas that I, I call a set it and forget it type of plant. Just give it light, water, and, just, and feed it. It's fine, you know, but um, definitely has grown back a lot. Way more foliage than it was before when it was um, in one of my six-inch pots. A lot, all of these, some of these started in a six-inch pot. Some of these came from rescues, which was not even bigger than, like, my pinky. And I'm just so amazed. We'll get into it. But, again, you guys, Calathea macchiana. Um, if you don't have a Calathea I would prefer you get one of these than any of a few of the other ones, even that medallion. That is a spider mite magnet, magnet, you know. Um, with this one here, if she gets spider mites, it's clearly my fault. But what I do love about these, look at that back. Come on. Uh, sexy, right? Very attractive. Very. This tickles all my fancy. <laughs> but a nice plant, you guys. Um, and as you can see, this one doesn't have that on there because these here have been put um, up under where well, they're getting some of the spider farmer um, light as well. But again, fill it. Ooh, Calathea, they go Persia, Calathea, Macchiana. All right, guys, this one right here is a, another one that you will see. I don't know if you're going to see her or her sister. Um, to be honest with you, in a House Plant of the Month video, but this is my Correct Me Future Me um, Calathea Magic Star Milky Way. I had it until I said Milky Way. This might be the Milky Way. I'm missing the Magic Star. Um, wonderful plant. Again, there's like 50 million plantlets in here. She started off nice size. Spider might happen knock the foliage off maybe got too much water one year and plummeted I know we switched out we may have switched out the substrate which looks a lot more um, water retentive than a lot of these others now okay okay no plant is the same even if they're in the same exact family so I did notice with a lot of my calathea some of these needed a lot more water than the others and some of these needed needed a lot more water than the others and the other ones I had to make sure the soil was a lot more drainy if that's yeah um, a lot more drainy simply because of the water regimen these oh gosh it's, it's hard to explain but basically your plant needs to support your water regimen basically that's what it is some of these need a lot more water than the others so I had to make their mixture a lot more airy which means that um, I would definitely have to keep up with the watering on them. But all in all, again, sexy backs. I mean, not as sexy as the Bacchiana simply because of it has a pattern. This is just pure, I don't even know what to call that, burgundy, purple. Now, some of these, the, if the variegation comes in nice, then that is, like, pretty. I mean, this is, like, the biggest leaf that is given. At, I didn't have to tell you. I mean, look at it. So, or well, since I cut it, and this plant is way older than what it looks, but um, as you can see, they well, 
I don't know if you guys can find any of these in your local nursery. I'm pretty sure you can find them online. Not buying them online when I can find them in my nursery. But, um, yeah, that one year I looked up and never seen it again. Never seen it again. And you know where I got it from? Ace. Go to your local Ace Hardware store. This is not a promotional video. It should be how much I shop there. I mean, you can look up my number and my account information. You can see I've spent a nice amount of zeros at that store, mostly on plants. But oh, well, there was that one time I bought that grill that was on sale. That doesn't count. I still spent way more than a freaking grill, probably triple at Ace. But anyway, you guys. Uh, Oh, did I say Calathea? This is a Stromanthe, a Synanthe. Stromanthe. Oh, here we go. We're gonna have captions, you guys, but um, Calathea, Gopergia, Stromanthe, Synanthe, Milky Way, Magic Star. I'm pretty sure it's the Magic Star. Okay, how about this? I had all three of them. One of them died, Root Rot. This was doing, oh, this was doing the time, you guys. I guess I can give you guys a quick backstory. Once upon a time, not long ago, literally not long ago, um, I was just buying Calatheas because they were pretty, you know? And I, I didn't know anything about a Calathea, not a thing. And I've killed a lot, overwatering, I can give you that. A lot with overwatering. I uh, wasn't sure about the draining situation, and this was one of the ones that got hit, but she decided to kick along and stay along with me. And to be honest with you, I put a lot more attention to her just to keep her as well because I mean, I want to say she was rare at the time, but definitely hard to find. And I'm pretty sure hard to find now unless you're somewhere where you have, like, your local plant shops. But again, Sananthe, I'm going to go with Magic Star. All right, guys, next plant is another OG. This, oh, my goodness. I grew this plant. I wish I had a, a pot in here. I thought I did. I may have taken it out. Um, it's one of those real small... Yeah, I took it out. It was literally, I found one in here when we was cleaning up the floor. But anyway, um, Calathea, Gopergia, Sheesh, Rattlesnake. You cannot go wrong with this. This is another plant I would recommend anyone, okay? Based on your soil, based on what they're growing in, I would recommend it to anyone. Um, you definitely can't give this to someone who's heavy handed with the watering and is not as well draining that's this is not gonna work you're gonna kill it but as you can see you guys she has grown like look at this leaf the biggest leaf i've ever gotten i don't want to sit let me just not even go down that path but look at this leaf this is a nice size this is this is a nice size like come on this is and the bags look at that look at that oh i'm glad that the, the some of these are facing that way so you can actually technically see the full dimension of the plant come on <sighs> They need a plant with just solid, oh, solid this color. They have my, um, they call it a pink star. It's like a rose, they, it's, and you will get to it, but just wonderful plant, you guys. I've grown her, another OG. You can see the stages of the foliage. All of this is grown in my, every single leaf you see has been grown in my care. Um, and she's still shooting out stuff in the front. When I got it, it was one of those little small pot, maybe like an inch pot really forgot where she got it from it was online Etsy shop I don't know but anyway they were hard to find <laughs> hard to find and anyway she bought me one and I kept it and I nurtured it and I've never seen one since then in the store in the freaking store this Calathea here and maybe like another Calathea is the only Calathea is that if I see another one that is bigger I would definitely get it definitely get it but Calathea rattlesnake you guys very easy plant to care for again water light fertilizer you're good all right guys another calathea i'm so freaking back come on another calathea i'm freaking proud of is my calathea gray star if you guys have been following me then you know um this was a rescue let's turn it around the front way this was a risk this one i love we'll get into it this was a rescue i wish i can show you guys exactly where it was a rescue but if you see any of the smaller, intentionally small foliage, like towards the middle, those are like the original leaves. Matter of fact, yep, look how damaged it is. She started off small, even smaller, um, and the rescue grew her out, um, got root rot, of course. 
um, grew out some more, switched locations, and we came here. And I babied her all summer. She actually she sat on the back patio, if you remember, all summer. But now look at her. Like this is not an update for your ass. Like come on. And then what I do love is about this plant. It kind of reminds you of a any any plant that is actually silver. This is the sheesh, guys. I'm sorry. Um, Gray Star Calathea. Um, but just wonderful, wonderful. Look at that blue. It definitely goes awesome with this here back. And again, there's that 3D. Um, you see again some of these here that are blue. Definitely older foliage. Um, but not getting as much light as the rest of these are getting. And I'm just loving this here plant. Aside from some of the older, older foliage that is still on here. Remember that I did come through. And we played, we did Edward Scissorhands on a lot of these plants. And I took a lot of the older foliage that I knew for a fact that were attracting mites. I, was, I wouldn't just say insects, that'll be a lie. Attracting mites, spider mites to be specific. Yeah, those. But again, Gray Star, um, Calathea, this thing, I just love this thing. Um, this is another one that I would think about getting, not wood, but let's think about getting if I ever found a bigger one, which here in the South is, is being directly in the middle of the south is just not where it is but i do love this here plant that blue is just where it's at you guys i mean come on and then like the slight subtle of the um the bay nations that is like sexy but yeah gray star she's gorgeous all right we have an oldie um fairly new but kind of sort of old to me um to us as well um calathea Freddy, Calathea Freddy, another easy plant. You guys haven't had any issues out of her literally at all. I may have lost a few leaves and that is due to, uh, let's be honest, her getting accustomed to my watering regimen. And then also um, some of the leaves were hiding behind a lot of the other Calatheas and even up on its own foliage that turned it yellow. So um, I forgot which light that I have. Um, so they're getting adequate, trust me, adequate light. Now they could, I wouldn't give them anything strong enough to, oh, this new leaves is, the new leaves that come in these things are like waxy. And then it, I mean, it's still like a wax feeling, but it's more dark and um, more prominent. That looks kind of like the Burl Marks uh, Calathea, but anywho. Um, Calathea Freddy, you guys, again, another easy going plant to have in your collection. Um, all of these here plants I guess, I, that I will mention in any Calathea, depending on your location, will get spider mites. Um, if you're not a insect type of person who freaks out, then definitely I wouldn't recommend <laughs> I wouldn't recommend you getting a Calathea. But um, just like I was saying about the symbiotic relationship, if you can live with the fact that you might have spider mites at a simple point any given time of the year then get you a calathea you guys it's not the end of the world um at least you how about this if you have a calathea at least you would know exactly where your spider mites are going okay instead of just having random plants and they all just flock to everything guess what spider mites have a taste bud just like you i don't know if it's a taste bud i'm gonna take it that far but they prefer different meals just like you do there we go, you guys. All right, so we're going to forget the hard water stains that you, <laughs> that you guys are seeing, but nice, subtle foliage. Calathea Freddy. Okay, we have another Oldie Goldie. Um, I do love her as well. So this is, you will definitely see her again. I think, if I'm not mistaken, they have made, or at least she have made, um, house plant of the year maybe one of the one of the years i don't know but definitely will be there this year <laughs> looking back i would sorry you guys um look at that come on just it's subtle but it still screams look at me now don't not the old damage i mean i really don't care but it still screams like, and those bags right tell me about it i'm listening i'm so listening yeah um sanguini stromantic oh phew. Calathea sanguini. All right. Um, there's three of these. There's a sanguini, milky. Way. We're not going into it, but I'm missing one, you guys. But still a wonderful plant. Like I said, subtle, nothing spectacular, like a sister with the variegation. I think that is the Milky Way, 
and then I have four. All right, because there's the trio trio star anywho. Um, I'm well. There's I have three. I'm missing one. Makes four. Follow me. But anyway, you guys, a nice freaking wonderful, wonderful plant. No issues, at least now. Um, you see all the perlite. I made sure uh, we covered all ends on this here plant this year, and was it last year as well? I think I repotted a lot of these last year when we came in here to um, support the surrounding, I would say issues, but surrounding temperatures and things that are that happens in throughout the year. But you guys, we've been through it. We've been through the freaking ringer. And I'm so glad that she's still here with me. I mean, look at her. <laughs> Again, subtle. I don't know if you call it variegation, but line is going down the middle. Um, you have a different shades of green and then also those backs, but come on. But you see, she's in a smaller pot. We, we had some real bad root issues with this year plant. So yeah, hopefully this year I'm tugging. I mean, of course she's not moving, but I see a few roots at the bottom. I, I, sorry about the dog. You guys see those roots? Yes, those are fruit roots at the bottom. So yeah, next plant. What are my favorites? Burl Marks Calathea. You can see like which sides my plant sit on just if I do the rotation. You see how bare this side is? Look at this side. But I was doing that because of the dead foliage. And you can't see this plant. How you're looking at it now, this is what I see. And then the front is cascaded. Wait, where's the front? Oh crap, found the dead foliage. This is the back. This is what the front looks like. This is what I see. Maybe not that part, but this is what I see right here. So in order to get any of the foliage, I have to get into it and look at those backs. You can't go wrong with those backs, you guys. I mean, well, but this one, I don't know. I see the backs of the other ones a lot more. When this one here prays, um, uh, goes to sleep rather, it doesn't, probably because of all of the foliage, it doesn't go all the way up. Like, it, I don't know if it, you know, but definitely need to get in here and put this one to the side and get this dead stuff out because I definitely would have got this. One thing I don't like, you guys, if any of my Calatheas um, decide to give any assortment of a yellow leaf, it must go. Why? Unfortunately, pests love the color yellow. Again, I had this debation with myself, like they love the color so much, why don't they fly to the sun? I don't get it. You know, it's yellow. It's real yellow. Last time I looked at it, yellow, orange, or whatever color you want it to be at this point, but hey, Burl Marks. Again, started off as a freaking rescue, smaller than maybe, smaller than the gray star. This was like one little itty bitty yellow teeny polka dot bikini little plug. It was horribly small, but look at this. And of course, bigger pot. This is a very quick, quick grower. Another one of my set it and forget it. I don't see any roots. But another one of my set it and forget it plants, you guys, with no freaking problems, always growing. I'm looking in here, it's like a million and one, 12 shoots. Everything has a new growth come out of it. It's kind of like freakishly scary, cool. I can't wait. Hopefully this year she gets, um, she's growing in height. Hopefully I can get her, keep her in here a little bit longer as well. Get her to get a lot taller because a lot, all these, a lot of these here, Calatheas, this one is growing more of a bushel, but a lot of these grow in like single stemettes and they get real tall and the leaves get real huge. Kind of like I was saying about the rattlesnake, I would definitely get. But um, if you want to see some new growth, this is what the new growth comes in. Um, that color, then of course it hardens off into your regular little marks pattern. I don't know, uh, but which is an also nice pattern as well. It kind of reminds you um, of the Macchiano but they're more round and more peacock-ish looking. But Calathea Burmarks. All right, guys, next plant we have is the um, Calathea Pink Star. Ha, ah, got it, Pink Star. Um, you might think it's the Rosa Pita, the Rosa Pita, but the new leaves, um, I wish I would have caught it for you, but um, when a new growth comes in, it's just as purple. If I'm not mistaken, it could be the same plant, or it could it just be could be the conditions. Um, this one I have to watch 
because when I put it in here, I'm not sure the root system was root system-y. So we're keeping an eye on her. Um, again, I just basically mainly worry about my root system. So when it's time to chop these, and I've lost maybe three leaves so far, um, a lot of those came from underwatering. This one has not had, I don't want to talk about the, the thing that I have in here that loves it on this here plant because if you're a YouTuber, any type of person that knows plants like I know, and if you start talking about that their plant, then something happens. Don't know why, but I'm pretty sure I don't look, guys. I don't, I'm a, it, it's, it's very interesting because it's like make that plant would have been dead what it was supposed to do on that video but why do it after i show the plant i'm not repotting it i'm not doing anything but she's a wonderful plant gives me that pop of color in the front and then also in the back now the front is a lot brighter of course that is the part where it's receiving the light and then also reflecting to also help with the light situation but hopefully we're giving this i'm hoping until Let's do the pull test. Um, she's definitely resisting. Um, there is a, a little bit of movement there, but um, the season is definitely changing. Today, it's, we're still in winter, if I'm not mistaken. It's February. Yeah, we're still in winter, but it's like 75. It's freaking hot. Sorry if you can hear the fan. I'm really not sorry because I'm not going to die in here, but um, heat stroke is real. Trust me. But, um, yeah, she's a wonderful freaking plant again. Now this one here, she has like a shimmer. I know I'm not fixing to try to, not with the shimmery, not, nope. But um, she has this, this, it shimmers, you guys. Again, that dog is so, it shimmers and I do love it. Um, no issues so far other than acclimating, which um, I can tell you she's done a lot better because if I do the, when I did the root test a while back, I could just literally yank her up. She wasn't locking and sending out new roots to hit the soil. So that it, you know, it, it pulls back. It gets that snap back. So, um, yeah, I don't. She don't definitely don't need any water. We just put water on it yesterday. I'm fixing to say, but anyway, you guys, Pink Star Calathea. I can't wait till she get big, or at least a strong enough root system to cut, and then watch her bushel back out. All right, right next beside her. Um, this one did not like the watering issue. This one is completely my fault. Even though I can't blame it on anyone else, this is when it's my fault. Sorry about that, guys. Camera cut off. But this is my Overfolia Calathea. If you're with me, then you, you've been the journey. You, 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 you. She used to sit a long time ago up in that area. Um, with, I had a different setup at the time, you guys. So, if you know, you know. But anyway. I was growing her out. I mean, she was huge and pretty, and that was that one time, you guys, I almost caught heat stroke, and I couldn't get out here and literally do nothing, and it was like 306 degrees that year. It was last year, last summer. It was like 7,000 degrees out here, and I could not get out here for nothing. That's why I was like, heat stroke is real. I didn't catch heat stroke, but I had the, the, the side effects, the symptoms, the side effects after. I had the symptoms. Yeah. It almost got me. But anywho, um, she suffered real bad. She was in one of the six inch um, pots that I do grow my calatheas in, which looks freaking spectacular with that purple with them backs. And it's just, I don't even, all of my calatheas has graduated from the pot. Okay, whatever. Um, but she was in one of those and I waited entirely too late to try to repot her. I, I, I repot her, you guys, after she got struck with everything except for good luck. Um, we did. We have been nurturing her. Um, I've been cutting off all of the dead foliage and things of that such. Um, we have, it's a lot stable. This one was another one that I could yank up if I wanted to, but of course I didn't. Um, growth season is growing, but as you can see, we are growing back here. And the only thing I'm waiting for now is for spring to really hit. And these plants are going to stress me out because they're going to grow like crazy again. And, oh well, crazier. They're growing moderately fast now. But once the season, I don't know how to figure it out. Maybe it's like, I think it's air pressure. Because even if a plant is in a dark, a really dark situation, Especially like these prayer plants, you can put them in the, the, a pitch black situation and I can guarantee you to almost promise you that these hands will go up. Not my hands. 
the prayer plants will start praying when it's dark outside. I don't care if it's dark in the inside, they're going to pray. It can be bright as hell in the inside, and they're going to pray. I don't know. I just what I don't know. Pressure. I don't know. Anyway, orbifolia. Yeah. So she's growing back. Um, I did check the root system perfectly fine. Matter of fact, a lot of these that look like this root system look exactly like that. Um, silver dragon we did whenever you've seen the silver dragon <laughs> semi hydro video um so she's perfectly fine and again everything is green we're just waiting for um spring to come and i'm pretty sure she's going to shoot out way more growth and these spikes are already pushing through as you can see but flathia over for ya. all right guys um i'm not definitely not going to pick up these two here um so what we're going to do is get the camera for you guys now and we're going to cover the rest of the bigger ones that are pretty not heavy but just 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 too much going on to try to move so let's grab them guys we're over here in this corner here we have these two definitely og um we're going to start for this here trio star calathea Rapersia, stromanthe um, a lot of these here, as you can see, like this here leaf is fixing to go. I'm going to cut this one off when we get through. Um, that one is still, it's pretty green. I'm not going to bother it. Another old leaf, but um, you can see how big and huge this plant was once before. A lot of this here, new growth. I mean, she's coming in. I'm trying not to um, block the light block the light situation as you can see but um, yeah she's doing perfectly fine I have no issues from her and again we do love these here backs and as you can see with the variegation like I was saying with the other one it comes through the back but all this here is new growth you guys this plant was almost literally dead you can see why um, like I said we cut a lot of the foliage off I keep the stems until she's done with them and then once she's done with them I go back and I either pull them off which you know they're really through if you can just pull them off but if it's still like down and then just cut it. But anywho, um, trial star, she's really wonderful, really wonderful, easy going plant. Um, she's not in the most brightest situation, but she is up under my brightest, uh, without giving you guys whiplash, brightest grow bulb there. Oh, that is my stand, you guys. I was telling you that's outside the door. But anyway, um, yeah, she's growing just fine. No issues. All this new growth is, well, what is that? Okay. All this new growth comes from my spider farmer light. If you remember the old setup, she used to, sorry you guys for the whiplash, she used to sit up under that one, which is why she has grown so much. And then um, I just moved up under here into one of my second um, brightest lights that I have in my collection. So, yeah, I mean, variegation. I mean, she's variegation -y. I mean, no problem there at all. All that is new growth. Anything that she's, only thing, that is crazy. If you see any, oh, I'm hitting my leaf. Please don't break it. Don't break it. Okay. Um, if you see any leaves like this size, these are all old foliage. So anything else is like new. Like I even kept that one. Um, all this is new. This is old. But anything else is new, which is crazy because if you delete all that new stuff, there's only like a few leaves. Crazy. But again, bright light. Um, I started fertilizing her too also as well new leafy all right down below we have an og one that i just i don't know i don't know oh yeah she's not supposed to have these edges i know that you guys but i mean come on look at the foliage you can't old foliage you can't not not like this here plant you know you really can't that's a no-go but um there's new oh i don't i only look for the new growth you guys there's new shoots all over the place. Um, if you remember, there were, this is the OG. The bigger ones that you're seeing is from the original. Um, these are from the rescue that I did have that was in a smaller pot. And as you can see, they're pushing out babies in, whoa, almost not the pot over. But um, same scenario, you guys. She's growing um, in this here location. I'm pretty sure the light is not where it needs to be but this is like come on that pattern you can't get enough of it but um did i say what it was no um calathea network you guys calathea network this is an um one of the ones that i got from overseas years back and luckily she's been with me even throughout the heart hardships heartbreak 
disappointments, all that is on my end. <laughs> she has still loved me to this day to stay with us, and she's not going anywhere. So those are the only two there. Um, now, if I go down below, oh, we have our massive pots. Everything else is a massive pot except for one. Um, this is the silver band, you guys. She's not, well, you can see some band silver. Um, I can tell you with any Calathea that doesn't have adequate light, well, that has some purple. But the purple backs, purple backs, these things backs get so freaking, they look like a regular purple back, you guys, <laughs> of a Calathea. But any hoot, um, I need to come in and trim off some of this here foliage before it attracts any unnecessary. Let's take that off. Um, and then this one, um, critters. But yeah full pot of these um, they're not getting I would say the best lighting but they're getting enough light to sustain themselves and I would say actually grow because if you know like I know and have been following me this pot was not that freaking full you know but I am loving her and she has grown out of the lot of the damaged leaves which also lets me know that she is growing the damaged leaf here new leaf that's trying to come in that there um, but yeah, Silver Band Maranta. Right next to her, we have my other massive pot of Red Maranta. Um, what can you say about a Maranta or AKA Prayer Plant? <laughs> I love them. <laughs> that's about it. Aside from the Swatter Mites, I love them. Um, when I say she's in a massive pot, if you've been following me, like, oh, look at that. See, found a yellow leaf. And you can't see it unless you move the foliage. Um, but she's in a massive barrel pot and growing and enjoying herself always flowering for me i'm always giving new growth this thing is like wonders but i do love her to death um red maranta like come on wonderful 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 all right and then the last well technically two but three well, it was technically three but they're two of the same um, this is my smaller lemon lime Maranta. You know, I just love me a lemon. I love me. You know, I love the color. Um, this one here is in a hanging, I'm going to say hackerme, macrame thing. You know, I really don't care for it, but you know, hey, it works and it gives me more space to work with. Um, right next to her, we have a massive, and I mean, let's see, can I go back some massive pot of Maranta? She's used to sit there, but. Um, I'm we, we kind of sort of rehabbing her. We'll talk about that in a second, but I'm loving this here plant When I say massive she's always flowering so I don't I mean I'm Trying to show you guys the pot. This isn't one of those things. I don't know, but this is my hand This thing is just wonderful uh, There's nothing to say negative about this here girl. I mean you really can't look at her. Come on you know um but only thing negative i can say right now is that she's like blocking my view so if i do this you get to see all of that you know especially like when i'm sitting down but as soon as she goes back yeah it doesn't bother anything she's getting the light that she necessarily deserves even though she was getting light down there perfectly fine i raised her up you know um if i can't i've learned that they're in pots that can be raised and if i can't put them anywhere else you guys, note, take them up in the air. <laughs> so I just hung her up, and she's out of the way for now. But again, blocking, you know, a lot of the views, especially like my backdrop and things. So, yeah, we're not talking about backdrops. Um, last but not least, my Ace Boone Coon. I shouldn't have said that out loud. People are going to get jealous. People, I mean my plants. It's my black, whoa black vein maranta now she's looking a little shaky i know i know um she's only doing that because when i repotted her you guys i honestly forgot that the root but oh, i didn't forget i made the as you can see let's see can we level it out the plant is sitting above the rim you know which is not good um so as i was watering and you know this mixture is i made a very kind of airier mixture than usual because i didn't want to root ride it anyway um what i've noticed <laughs> and then poking through the soil and even looking back um at the video uh, when i put these on here and then watering the soil is settling 
um, all of this up here was getting rinsed down or rinsed away. A lot of the root ball was showing and it was drying out. Completely horrible. So what I did was I added soil to the top of here, um, which they don't like. I would say most of any plant don't like because I basically cut off their oxygen supply and um, what I'm hopefully that it will do and what it should do, which is what I'm seeing um, from the new growth that is pushing out. Um, basically, you guys, is that those nodes were root. Um, I tried to go in and pull off a lot of the sheathing, but it was like it was a lot of sheathing. That's how I knew I was behind. This thing was it was sheathed. All right. So as you can see, like it was it was just horrible. Yeah, I just I could have. I don't know. Well, when I did that house front of the year video and you guys I mean it wasn't showing so and that was like months ago at this point literally two but more because it was I don't know anyway you guys but that is it all my calatheas where we are all my calatheas all of my prayer plants again if you have the space for them and if you enjoy them please get them you guys there's nothing wrong with having um, spider mites unless they're like completely out of control I wouldn't recommend that but all the ones that I did mention to you guys that um, were stable enough to have in your home that are pest free I would definitely recommend you getting some of those it's definitely worth it. it adds a lot of color to your collection and even though they're not like massive philodendrons I can guarantee you um, if anyone walks into your collection they're gonna ask well, where's that pink one you know kind of like a pink princess you know the colors is what grabs them and I can tell you calatheas you cannot cannot mess with the calathea when it comes with color and pattern I mean you probably can say that with the agalima but we're talking about calatheas come on all right, guys, that is it here for today's video. Please do me a favor with that like button if you enjoyed. Um, that Ethereum just looks good, you know. My campos, we have to figure out. Nope, nope. Um, please hit the like button if you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section below. Um, what collectors do you have in your collection? How long have you had them? And um, do you have any spider mite issues? Again, I do know there's a lot of people in different climates that don't have any issues with spider mites you really can't be mad you know but I'm aggravated I mean I'm not trying to give them spider mites but can I have a time with no spider mites you know but um, my regimen is I usually just um, spray them down once a month and then I also um, if you've been following me I release my ladybugs in here um, what's the name from nature's good guys yep nature good guys you guys I get them off of Amazon um, I do have a YouTube Instagram I think Facebook as well go check them out and I do have some other um, beneficial mites as well this is not a promotional video you guys I just do love them um, and I also just like seeing ladybugs in here you know and they be ladybugging and there are a good bit of 50 to maybe 100 still in here some of these are still I would say in hibernation mode don't know why I mean I do know why the nights are still cold even though today is like 80 70 12 out here um, nice day today, but it's supposed to cool down today, and then a lot of other warm ups and downs and stuff. But anywho, you guys, um, that is it here for today's video. Do me a favor, make sure you are subscribed. Um, comment down below. Make sure notification bell is on to be able to keep you notified and let you know what's going on over here, at Plant with Pete. And that is it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.